Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. So today we're at the village of West Stour in the Blackmore Vale area of North Dorset. It's one of a group of villages known as the Stours, about five miles west of Shaftesbury. And we're going to be walking a roughly three mile route taking in the villages of West Stour, Stour Provost and Fifehead Magdalen. And as well as exploring three churches, we'll be following the upper reaches of the River Star as it flows through a very pretty valley whose tranquility really has remained undisturbed by the passage of time. Now I'm filming at the end of August. There's a fair bit of cloud about, but the sun is up there, so hopefully we'll see that shortly. Certainly we're going to be dry today. Should be perfect conditions for a walk. Do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at the Ship Inn, which is just behind me here. Now, it's listed on uh, the Historic England website as being early 19th century, but I have seen sources indicate it uh, dates as far back as 1720. And it's a coaching inn built by a ship's captain with timbers from his boat. And in the 18th century, it was used as a centre for handling smuggled spirits and luxury goods from France. It also became the headquarters for a press gang procuring volunteers for Nelson's Navy. Basically, volunteers or prisoners were being taken to Plymouth for transportation, and this was a stop-off point. It was also used when uh, transporting prisoners from Exeter Jail to Andover Jail. They used to stop here overnight, and prisoners were locked behind a massive studded door, which is still here. Well, I said the, the ship is right by the busy A30, which is the main road from Shaftesbury to Sherbourne. I believe it used to be the old road from uh, London to Exeter. Anyway, I expect we'll end up at the ship in at the end of the walk. But before we head out into the countryside, let's have a little wander up to the church through the village. And this is Ashley House with some lovely red roses climbing up the wall there. And this is the old Methodist chapel opposite Ashley House, established, I believe, in 1854. And there's the West Star Village Hall, with a handy little map outside showing all the names of the houses. Oh, a beautiful house, Lilac Cottage. I love the uh, pink roses outside. Well, this is St Mary's Church, and it consists of a nave, chancel, tower and south porch. The chancel dates from the 13th century, and it was altered in the 18th century. The nave and tower were rebuilt in 1840, and when they were rebuilding the nave, they used part of the original foundation, so the chancel is not quite aligned with the nave. I think it's got three bells. I did come across a picture on the internet uh, dated 1840. Well, let's have a little look inside. Now, unusually for me, I've managed to find some lights. So there by the door is the font. And then there's a quite magnificent wooden gallery up there at the back. And then just looking towards the chancel, the pulpit there on the right and the organ on the left. It's quite a, a light church. Um, as far as I can see, there aren't any stained glass windows there. Well, we're now going to head out into the countryside. We're going to start heading southwards where we're going to meet up with an old friend of ours, the River Star.
just crossing over the River Stour, which is looking quite serene today. The longest river in Dorset at 61 miles and its source is actually just outside the country at Stour Head in Wiltshire and it flows out to sea at Christchurch Harbour. We've actually uh, done a walk both at Stour Head and at uh, the end of the Stour Valley Way. A lovely little weir in the distance. We're looking at an old map, 1902 map. There was a, a boathouse once just a little bit further along the bank, but I can't see that it's there now. Right, I see there's some livestock in the next field, so Logan will have to go back on a lead. Well, the footpath is taking us alongside the River Star. I really do enjoy these river walks in the summer, the reflections that you get off the water are terrific. There's loads of butterflies and dragonflies about and the odd fish popping up from time to time. Well, this is where we temporarily say goodbye to the star as we continue to head eastwards but we will be meeting up with the river later on in the walk on the homeward journey. Oh it is absolutely glorious now that the sun is out. There's no wind at all it's one of those very very calm days And I can't hear a thing. Absolute silence. Very peaceful. I'm starting to get some terrific views now. You can see where we've come from. There's West Star behind me. We're just about to head into our next village or settlement, Star Provost. Well, this is the outskirts of Star Provost. There was a mill here mentioned in the Doomsday Book, but after the Norman Conquest, the village and church belonged to a nunnery but for 500 years, up to 1925, much of the land and houses were owned by King's College, Cambridge. Now I think that our route takes us back down that way towards the river, but before we do, let's have a little wander through Star Provost. Oh, quite gorgeous thatched cottage here. Again, more roses climbing up the side. So many of these houses showing a lot of character and looking splendid in the sunshine, of course. Now this house here called Provost House is 18th century and it shows as being the Royal Oak Pub on a 1902 map. I think it closed in the 1990s, not 100% sure. Just seeing the red post box there, I think this might have been the old post office in which case it's a late 18th, early 19th century. And this is our second church of the walk, the Church of St Michael's and All Angels. And it originates from the 13th or 14th century. I have seen one source suggest 1302. There probably was an earlier building here. It consists of a nave, chancel, north aisle, south porch and south tower. The nave and chancel arch are early 14th century. The south tower was added in the 15th century with 17th and 19th century alterations. The north aisle was added in the 16th century and the chancel was rebuilt in the 19th century when uh, the south porch was added. 
I think it's got four bells. Well, I've just moved round to the eastern end of the village by Manor Farm and there's a, you can see a stone wall in front of me. Well, if you look at a 1902 map at this exact location, there was a, an animal pound that would have been used for holding stray animals until they were recovered. I wonder if this wall is still part of the old pound. I don't know. Well, what an enchanting little village. OK, we're now going to change direction and I'm going to start heading westwards and hopefully uh, meet up with the river again. This must be the back of the old mill. I think the present building uh, dates to the 19th century, but as I said, there's been a mill on the site for centuries. I can just see <laughs> a couple of young swans. Oh no, it's what, three of them? They're beautiful. Well, this is where we cross over the River Star. So we say goodbye to those quite exquisite swans and cross over this footbridge. Have a, spend a few minutes just uh, watching the river flow by before we continue onwards. Well, I could have uh, just stood by that bridge over the river for ages. But we must kick on, heading westwards to our next destination, the little settlement of uh, Fyford Magdalen. Well, this is where we finally say goodbye to the River Stour as it bends round and makes its way further south. And we're heading up towards the village in the distance. Well, for a second, this had me fooled. <laughs> I got all excited. I thought, oh, I'm going to get really close up to a heron. Well, I suppose I have, sort of. So we've been climbing up here. We're just about to, to come out of this field. Um, but before we do, I'll just point out, you can probably see in the distance there, a, a, a wall. Um, it's actually a ha-ha. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that shortly. Well, there's some equally beautiful views on this side of the hedge. You can see the, where the course of the the River Star goes winding its way along the bottom of the valley. Everything's so green and lush. It's a bit unusual for August. We've had quite a wet July. That's probably why. Aha. Well, they are blackberries, but they're not particularly juicy or big but that's about the best we're going to do so i'm going to have to <laughs> coming apart my hand oh dear well, logan can't get up to them but sorry lad that's the best i can do for you <laughs> i don't think he's very impressed is he <laughs> well we're just coming into the little village of fyford magdalen without an e on the end and it means well, 
place of five hives dedicated to St Magdalene with an E on the end. <laughs> the church here is dedicated to St Mary Magdalene. Well, just on the eastern side of the village, there's this impressive set of gates that have got quite a sad story to them. They're the, uh, the gates of Fifehead House, or should I say what was once Fifehead House. The house was built in 1807 to replace a former Tudor house, but it was all demolished in 1964. The ha-ha of the garden is still here. In fact, um, that was that wall that I pointed out to you earlier on as we were heading uphill. But uh, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing left of the house apart from these gates. And this is our third church of the walk, the Church of uh, St Mary Magdalene. And it consists of a nave, chancel, south tower incorporating a porch and a north chapel. The nave, chancel and tower are all from the 14th century with alterations in the 15th and 17th centuries. The north chapel was added in either the 17th or 18th uh, century and there was a huge restoration in 1905. Let's have a little peep inside and I have found some lights. <laughs> so we've got the font by the door. It looks as though there's a, is that a smaller font at the far end there? And a stained glass window above and at the other end pulpit on the right and the chancel and altar straight ahead. Some lovely paintings just above the altar there. And on the left hand side, the organ. And then just around from the organ, just to the left of the altar, the Newman Chapel with this quite incredible memorial that's splendid. Well, that gorgeous property there is the old rectory which dates to the 17th century but was extended in the 18th century. Well very much on the homeward leg now heading north back to West Star and if I've got my calculations right it should be lunchtime at the ship inn. I will obviously have to go in there purely for uh, investigative and research purposes for the video. Now, just a little heads up, right at the end of the walk, we've come up that footpath there. Now, this is the very busy a30 which we can just cross over and just where that tractor is um, is the next bit of footpath there's about 100 yards where there's no footpath so you be very careful on this last bit Aha, our final destination in we go well here we are back at the ship in where i'm just about to enjoy a pint of sheep dip Seriously, that's what it's called. Oh, it tastes a lot better than it sounds. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed the walk today. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Taves Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today. The weather has been glorious. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Right, we've got some cheesy chips on the way but in the meantime there's some little treats to keep you going <laughs>